The arthroscopic bellows sign identifies hidden rotator cuff tears. In this left shoulder in the beach chair position, we can see with limited motion of the glenohumeral joint, fluid extravasating in and out of a rotator cuff tendon defect. Limited resection of the superior capsule exposes the intratendinous tendon tear. Resection of a slightly larger amount of superior capsule better exposes the tendon defect. Using a marking suture here to identify the adjacent bursal rotator cuff tendon surface helps us to recognize whether there is bursal changes and we can see that there is not. And in fact, this tendon tear would be very difficult to identify if not for recognition of the bellows. In this cursory view of another shoulder, left shoulder beach chair position, we can see no obvious significant irregularities, but with careful assessment, again, we can see the bellow sign with fluid rushing back and forth through a rotator cuff tendon defect. Again, we can resect some of the superior capsule to better identify the margins and extent of the tear. and we can actually drive our camera into this defect. Again, marking this tendon tear and identifying on the bursal surface, again, demonstrates that no evidence of rotator cuff pathology is seen on the bursal surface. Again, emphasizing the value of identifying the bellow sign when present. In this third example, again, in a left shoulder in the beach chair position, we can see a more obvious case of the bellow sign. Debridement of this area of superior capsule again exposes a larger rotator cuff tendon tear. In fact, we can note that the rotator cuff tendon tear is full thickness in nature, and the fluid extravasation likely comes from fluid within the subacromial space moving back and forth into the glenohumeral joint. And in this shoulder, in the subacromial space, again, we can see the full thickness nature of the rotator cuff. The bellow sign also occurs in the subscapularis, and we can see here in the right shoulder, with internal and external rotation of the shoulder, the bellow sign with changes in the external surface of the subscapularis as fluid moves in and out of the defect created within the subscapularis tendon. Debridement of this area exposes the pathology within the subscapularis. And we can see here a significant upper border partial thickness tear with exposure of the lesser tuberosity after the bellows tissue is exposed and debrided away. Here yet another example of the subscapularis, right shoulder beach chair position. Again, we can see motion of the tendon itself because of the defect created beyond the margin of the subscapularis surface. Again, debridement of the subscapularis helps to identify the extent of the lesion. Again, we can see significant exposure of the lesser tuberosity. In this particular example, a repair was accomplished using an anchor. We can see better reapproximation of the subscapularis tendon see knots in good repair.